Hello and well met. This is Laren with the Fantasy Grounds Academy. I'm going to go over another episode of Map Tools 101. The topic for this is assets and tiles. From time to time, you may want to add some sort of furniture or maybe even tiles to a map, whatever it may be. Um, the best practice would be to use the actual tool for it. And in this case, this would be in the um, map tools for layers. This is where you would set your tiles. You have a tile section here, which can be used for anything from tokens to assets to artwork, whatever you want to use it for. The advantage of using this is if you drop an image straight from your asset list, which would be in Fantasy Grounds under your library, you don't have any control over the size of the asset until you actually place it, and then you have to resize it after the fact. The next thing is you have to also make sure that you either have the assets and you refresh your assets list, and or you have access to one of the Fantasy Ground subscriptions or one of the map packs. And in that case, if you have assets and you want to add them to an existing map, you will use this layers tool. So this little box here where the tiles are is where you're going to place your layer. So I have an example of a set that I've put together in Fantasy Grounds, and then I will show you some tips. So the set consists of this candle, which is sitting on the top, the table, which is the next layer, and then there's two chairs, which are here and here. So there's two chairs, a table, a candle, and then the candle itself has a lighting effect on it or assigned to it from the lighting tool, which we're not going to go over, but that's basically what's in the set. So when you go over and you try to add things to a map, it's better if you take the art from your library, from your assets, drag and drop it to the hotkeys below in Fantasy Grounds, and then once you have a collection or an idea of what you want to put together, then you drag those assets from the toolbar to your map into the tile area first and then stamp it on the map. It's a little bit longer of a process, but it gives you more control. So as you click on the different layers, you can manipulate these individually by clicking on the layer and making sure you're in the layer selection tool. What usually happens though is when you place a, a tile for the first time, you end up trying to resize it and, and try to move it. What will happen is you'll still be in tile mode and you'll actually click and make another instance of that tile. You want to make sure you switch to the layer tool first. That's important. Once you do that, then you can touch and manipulate your file. You can stretch it by holding control or shift. Those are different ways that you can manipulate the image after you've stamped it. But once you have this stamped, you'd want to switch to the next selection layer which is going to be in this case this is the table or one of the chairs actually so you have to kind of learn how to stamp the tools onto your map but then you also have to learn how to get out of the habit of leaving your tool in the stamp tile because what will happen is if you have it in stamp mode you're going to keep stamping the same image over and over so if you don't want that you want to click on the layer selection and then move things around accordingly and that's generally where a lot of people go wrong when they first start fantasy grounds or what the frustration they can go through so i'm going to temporarily turn off the line of sight so that you get a better idea of to see what i'm doing so i'm going to disable the lighting effects and now i just have this layer of the map tools along with something else that i've placed on here which is the table and chair set so that's one thing that uh that I've done in my classes that I've taught others to get used to the tools by, by utilizing what's here, meaning that you will understand sort of like what the tools do. So right now I'm in play mode, I'm switching to layers, and I just happen to have the same assets in Fantasy Grounds um, basically put down into my toolbar so it's easier for me to find these. So I'm not digging through the library and the assets every time I wanna add something. So you want to go and look for all that stuff first, drag those three or four items down into your toolbar temporarily, and then when you're ready, you drag those to the tile area and then place them. So for example, I'm going to grab a table from my toolbar and drag and drop it into the tile area. So that's the first step. 
it says it's two by two, so that's the original size. However, if I didn't know what size this table was and I just drag it to the map, I'm going to have less control over what the starting size is going to be. Then I have to go back retroactively and size it to where I want it. In this case, if you put it in the tile area, you'll see the dimensions in squares or tiles. So if you have your um, grid set, this is a two by two tile. At this point, I can rotate it so I can actually use the rotation. I could flip the orientation if it has features that I want different and I can recolor it. So instead of having this, this regular black or brown table, I can recolor it too. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and place this on the map just so you get an idea. So I'm gonna place in the center of these four squares because I want it to be centered there. So that's the table. I'm in the layer mode and in the stamp tool tile. But once I'm done with that, I wanna to switch to the layer selection tool. That way, if I move this around, I'm not gonna accidentally stamp another instance of this. And that's important because it'll drive you nuts if you don't fix that. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is to make sure that I have my next asset ready to go. In this case, it's going to be the candle. So I will drag and drop that into the tile area. And according to this, it's only about 0 0.6 or you know, roughly it'll take up half a square. Not the entire asset, but the... Uh, square that it sets in is going to be that. So it could be transparent around it, but it's only going to be one little dot. So we'll just click in one of these squares, one of these four squares, we'll see what it looks like. So there's the candle, and it looks you know, fairly square to where you might want it. Now, if you didn't like the size of the orientation, you want to click on the layer selection tool. And that's generally where people go wrong. They'll still be in the tile tool. You want to go into the layer tool and you can move this asset where you want it to. Now, right now it's kind of clicking to, or in this case, snapping to a grid at the half grid. If you want to move it to a custom spot and you don't have that, um, that snap to grid, you can turn off the snap to grid and then that gives you the ability to move the content without having that snap to grid. Or you can leave that on and hold down the control key and you can do all kinds of things with that. And, and this way you can have more freedom of where you want to place it. So let's say you place it here. And now let's say you think it's a little bit small. So I'm still in the layer selection tool. I can drag out one of these corners. If you just drag it without hitting no key at all or control, it's going to look like that. It's going to distort. If you hold down shift, it's going to do it in a ratio or in, in the actual size ratio so it won't um, get distorted. So if you hold down the shift key, you can move this in and out so that you can change the size of it if you want without it losing its shape. So that's important that you know that. So now that you have that there, you have a table and a, ch and a candle. So at this point, you could call this a set. So right now I have two candles, two sets here. So I'm going to make a folder and I'm going to call this dining set two. You make a folder by clicking on the folder icon at the bottom of the um, map tools menu. And then it will call itself folder. And then I went ahead and renamed it. Now I'm going to drag this candle and my table to that set. So now this can move as a set. So the advantage is once those are in a folder and it's not locked, I can click on the main folder layer and move it without having to remove everything at once. So that essentially becomes a set. And then if I wanted to set this candle again to have lighting, you would select this layer in the layer section, go to the lighting tool, make sure you click on add light, and make sure that the candle unit is, is selected in this case in the layers, and then select your preset. So I might go with candle. And then once it's set, you click on the layer, make sure it's on the layer of candle. And there you go. So now the light is assigned to that candle 
And then when you go into play mode and you turn on your options for line of sight, there's your table, there's the candle, and you can move this if you click on the the uh, the main folder where everything is at. You can um, go to the selection tool in layers and then move this around as you need. So that is how you work with assets. Once you learn to use the layer tool and then you understand that it's easier to put the assets in the tile area, you can size them with the ratio here under sizing first. You can change the, the color. So maybe I want to put a shadow underneath this table to give it kind of a more of a professional look. So if I go to play mode, I'm going to turn off the lighting tools again because I don't want to get confused. I'm going to make another instance of this table and recolor it as like a black shadow and then change the opacity so it's kind of see-through. So what I'm going to do is go back to the layers tool. I have the shortcut for this table still in my library and it's in my shortcut keys right now. So I'm going to drag and drop it up to the top here. Okay, so it's in the tile area. It's in the stamp tool. It's the same dimensions. So I'm going to click again on this uh, middle layer here or close by it. And there's the other table. So what I want to do now is I have this selected is I can switch to the layer selection mode or I could have colored it before I stamped it. I click on the asset, or in this case, this is the second table, and change the, the color. So I'm going to go with a black color. And then I'm going to change the opacity where it's just barely kind of see-through. And then I will take and put this on a, on a layer underneath the table. So if I want to go underneath, I need to drag it down underneath the layer of this original table. And this just gives you that casted shadow look. And then when you're in that mode, you can select this layer that you just moved and move it. And like I said, if you don't want it to snap to grid, you hold down shift. Or control and that kind of gives you that shadow effect so it really depends on what your needs are and then if the tint is too light or too dark you can you can always go back and retroactively switch how much opacity or how how see-through it is so that is basically how that um, the the layers tool works is that you use it to scale things to get an idea of the size to retint it, to rotate it before you stamp it on the map. That's so much easier than guessing what it's going to look like, resizing it, trying to fit it where he goes, and doing it that way because that's kind of a backwards way of doing it. It's it is a way to do it. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that it makes it harder to guess what the initial starting size is going to be. So just keep that in mind that the layer tool helps with that. And it allows you to have more control over it before you stamp it. Otherwise, you're going back retroactively and doing it. No problem with that. So that's all I had for today. Take care. Have a good week. And see you around. Bye-bye.